I've been thinking a lot about um, poets and prophets and everyday heroes. About Maya Angelou and Langston Hughes. About Fannie Lou Hamer and Martin Luther King. About John of Patmos, Isaiah and Micah. About Francis Wheeler and Jesse Lewis. About Henry. <laughs> and about you and me. When I was a little girl, Maya Angelou told me that the caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. The caged bird sings of freedom, Four months ago, December 14, 2012, a massacre. Sandy Hook, 27 dead, one shooter, six innocent adults, 20 little children, one named Jesse. On that morning, Jesse McCord Lewis walks out of his house and down the driveway toward his dad who was waiting to drive him to school. And along the way, he stopped to write a message with his finger in the frost of his mother's car door. I love you, he wrote. Just hours later, he was one of the lost children. His parents called him the little soldier he was a leader. And the way they tell the story, he sacrificed his life. Because when the bullets started flying, he ran into the bullet fire to try to save some of his friends. I've been thinking a lot about poets and prophets and everyday heroes. Like a woman named Francine Wheeler who got to do the president's address last Saturday and wrote an open letter to Congress that she read. I'll excerpt. Her little boy Ben was six, and he was lost in one of the first grade classrooms. 29 of our children, she wrote, and six of our educators gone out of the blue. I've heard people say that the tidal wave of anguish our country felt on 12-14 has receded, but not for us. To us, it feels as if it happened just yesterday. And in the four months since we lost our loved ones, thousands of other Americans have died at the end of a gun. Thousands of other families across the United States are also drowning in their grief, she added. More than 3,300 people, people, 3,300 people have been killed by gunfire since December 14th. Children like Paul Sampleton Jr., a Gwinnett County, Alabama teenager who was killed not because he was in a gang war, not because he was robbing a store. He was killed because he had on basketball shoes that his friends wanted. So they followed him home and they tied him up in the kitchen, and they shot him, and they left him to die. In January 2011, a rapper named Macklemore, I don't rap either, but this poet, this prophet, writing about those Air Nikes, I want to fly. Can you take me far away? Give me a star to reach for? Tell me what it takes and I'll go so high. I'll go so high. My feet won't touch the ground. Stitch my wings and pull the strings. I bought these dreams that all fall down. We want what we can't have. Commonity makes us want it. So expensive. Damn, I just have to flaunt it. Got to show I'm so exclusive that this new stuff, $100 for a pair of shoes, 
I would never hoop in. Look at me. Look at me. I'm a cool kid. I'm an individual, yeah. But I'm part of a movement. My movement told me to be a consumer, and I consumed it. They told me to just do it. And I listened to what that swoosh said. Look at what that swoosh did. See how it consumed my thoughts? Are you stupid? Don't crease them, just leave them in that box. Strangled by these laces, laces I can barely talk. That's my air bubble and I'm lost if it pops. We are what we wear, we wear what we are. But see, I look in the mirror and I think Phil Knight tricked us all. Will I stand for change or stay in my box? These Nikes help define me and I'm trying to take them off. <laughs> Macklemore wrote that. I've been thinking a lot about prophets and poets and everyday heroes. I've been thinking about words from a man named Micah who who when his people were wondering what was wrong with their God, I, I just want to go on record to say I think Israel had bad theology, but they were convinced that they were being punished with famine and drought and pestilence and locusts and sword and war because they had disobeyed their God. Uh, parenthesis, I don't really want to work for a God who likes to rain on people and kill people. But in the theology of Israel, their God had slammed them because they were disobedient. And they found themselves wondering, well, what do you really want, God? And the prophet Micah said, on God's behalf, I don't want your firstborn calves. I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your burnt offerings. I don't want your firstborn child. I don't want rivers of oil. I want you. I want you to do justice. I want you to love kindness. And I want you to walk humbly, circumspectly, closely all along the way with me. I don't want you to cry tears about dead babies. I want you to do something. I don't want you to lament that there's injustice in the world. I want you to make it happen. I don't want you to mourn what someone else is not doing in the political arena, on their blogosphere, in their neighborhood, in a campaign. I want you to get in the game. I want you to do it, to just do it. One small thing every day toward it. The just thing might be, rather than frowning at the homeless dude on the corner, you line your pockets with McDonald's coupons and give him a Happy Meal, okay. <laughs> just do it. The one thing for you might be to finally, oh, finally, forgive the one you're mad at. Just let them escape from the prison of your anger so they might be free to live a life of joy and faith, not crippled by your disdain, just do it. The just thing for you might be that in your community, where, where the racism is insipid and dripping out of the lips of your friends, you take the time to care front at that table. No, 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 no. We're not going to talk like that anymore, not in my presence. Just do it. I don't want your rivers of oil. I don't want your smelly burnt offerings. I don't want your sacrifices. I'm not sure I want your worship, is what God told Habakkuk to say. That's scary. Or Isaiah to say. I'm not sure I want to see you singing these amazing gospel songs. 
I want to see you loving kindness. The word in Hebrew is chesed, chesed. You can't even translate it into one word in English. It's like the glue that binds all relationships. It's kindness, it's mercy, it's tenderness, it's loyalty, it's love, it's compassion, like all of those words you need for chesed. I want you to love ahab, the Hebrew word, hesed. I want you to ahab, hesed. I want you to love kindly. I want you to love mercifully. I want you to love extravagantly. I want you to do justice, and I want you to love kindness. Just do it. I've been thinking a lot about poets and prophets, everyday heroes. Little Jesse, a few days before he died, wrote a three-word poem on the chalkboard in his family's house. Nurturing, spelled like a six-year-old, N-O-R-T-U-R-I-N-G. Nurturing, healing, love. Nurturing, healing, love. Sounds like a prophecy to me. From out of the mouths of babes, they say a little child will lead us. So his parents, who should just be furious, and maybe are, started a Just Love Like Jesse Foundation to teach little kids how to love, not hate. Maybe to teach some grown-ups how to love, not hate. Just love. What does it look like to just love? Hold the door open for a stranger. <laughs> Save the last cup of coffee for your freaked out colleague. <laughs> that will not function without caffeine. Call your mother, even though she doesn't like the fact that you have a same gender-loving relationship. She had you. Call her. Make up with your worst enemy, because God loves her too. What does loving kindness look like? It looks like getting outside of our self and our self-protection and our boundaries and our closeness and our fear to move toward the other, to get on the border with the other. Loving kindness means having a border personality. Not borderline, not borderline. <laughs> Having a border personality, the willingness to take a risk to get on the border, a willingness to walk in the shoes of the other to get on the border, a willingness to think both and, not either or binary categories, to be your gayest straight self. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the gayest straight black woman I know. <laughs> I mean, I am. I want to be on that border for my brothers and sisters, right? I, I, I don't want to stand in straight privilege. I want to get on the border with my friends. If I wasn't already married to John, I think we might wait till marriage is legal every place in the nation. Loving kindness means getting on the border. Just do it. Take a risk. Walk on the wrong side. Experience life from somebody else's hermeneutic uh, viewpoint because you read about it, talk about it, learn about it. Ooh, talk to them about it. Spend some time listening about it. I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your smelly burnt offerings. I don't want your firstborn children. I want you to do justice. I want you to love kindly. And I want you I want you, 
God said through that prophet to walk with me, walk humbly. When we were little in Sunday school, they told us to walk humbly with God. What does that mean, walk humbly with God? I don't know. Duck your head and walk with God. Look down and walk with God. I don't know what that means. Be humble, and then you find yourself pretending like you don't have any gifts to use in the world, and you do. Better translation, walk closely with God. Better translation, walk so close with God that no one can tell where God leaves off and you begin. Walk so closely with God that those hokey cards when we were little and, you know, there was a footstep and it was just one in the sand. Yeah, like that. Just like that. Where your steps and God's steps are like lockstepped. And so if God is walking across the wilderness to get people into the promised land, you're walking across the wilderness to get people health care. If God is walking up the mountaintop to get people to where they can have affordable education, you climb in that mountain to make sure that no child gets left behind. If God is walking through the, through the city to make sure that there is no gun violence, we're walking right with God all the way to the blogosphere, to the petitions we need to sign. We're going to click on every website. We're going to put our name in the game. We're going to march and walk with God until it's healed. I don't want your sacrifices. I want you. I don't know about you, but I think Revelation is a pretty scary book most of the time. When I was a little girl, my sister and I opened it up one Easter morning. We were reading about beasts and seven heads and snakes. Ah! You've got to go to seminary and you can't, can't skip reading that book. I would skip it. But as frightening as some of the passages are, there are some amazing pictures of the world that God is calling us to create. In Revelation 21 and 22, it's all about the holy city. It's all about the redeemed city with a river running through it. And leaves on the trees next to the river are for the healing of the nations. And as Cheryl read to us in Revelation 7, this crazy, fantastic, multiracial, multicultural, multiethnic, multilingual, multisexual, multiclass band of folk are all praising God in one voice. And they're saying, Amen. Glory and honor be to the Lamb. And what they're singing about is there's no more tears. They're singing about the fact that there's no more heartache. There's no more problems making God's people weep. No more bellies are hungry. No more folks are laying out in the cold trying to figure out how to make their ends meet and pay their bills. Nobody else is, is disenfranchised or put out of their congregations because of who they love. Nobody else is PTSD because their classmates got shot dead. I see a movement, not the commodity movement that made those boys buy the Nike sneakers, but I see a multiracial, multicultural, multiclass, multiethnic movement of men and women and boys and girls who understand that God does not want our smelly sacrifices. God wants us. God wants us to do justice, not think about justice, not pray about justice, not dream about justice, to be the justice-doing people. God wants us to love kindly, passionately, embarrassingly, ridiculously, Foolish, embarrass yourself, Lee. <laughs> Extravagantly, passionately. God and each other. Love. And God wants us to walk so close with God that they can't distinguish between us. Can't tell where God is and where we are.
Can't see the beginning, can't see the end. Just can't tell. Just one body, one body moving. One body marching, one body singing and praying and dancing and acting and moving the world to a healed place. You and I are the ones we've been waiting for. You and I thought this was somebody else's war, but you and I are the only ones, the only ones to make it happen. Just do it.